Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. So open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Open the eyes of our hearts. We want to see you. We want to see you. Oh, yes, precious Lord, we want to thank you for a brand new day. And we are seeking you. We want to see you. We want to have visions of you, dreams of you. We want to have conversations with you, prayers with you. We want to see you answering things in our life. We want to see the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And even when you say, no, don't go that way, not now, or the timing's not right, or whatever, <clears throat> Lord, we are grateful. We know that you guide and you guard our steps. And so we welcome you to the reading of your very own word. I'm going to read it, but Holy Spirit, we're asking you to breathe on it, to bring it to life for us, each one of us, to bring answers to things that we ponder, that trouble our hearts, that we wonder about. Lord, it's all in your word. Every answer to everything is in your word. And so we are most grateful and we consider ourselves so privileged to come together. I welcome each and every one of you, all you faithful saints. You've come to hear the word. And I just know the word is going to bless you today. We will be reading on this November 11, November 11, Veterans Day in America. And I just want to honor and congratulate and thank all of the veterans, anybody who served, male or female. I want to thank you for serving. Yes. It is because of you that America has had the, the wonderful heritage and history it's had. I want to thank my special little Sammy, my own husband, served four years in the Navy, in the Seabees, and now he's up in heaven serving the Lord, full-time eternity. But I want to thank him from the earth, because I have great memories of pictures of him there and things that he did. And he was a builder. He built huge barracks with teams for all of the Navy Seabees who were going to come to Trinidad. And so I pray that every veteran has a beautiful day, that someone honors you, takes you out to lunch or whatever, prays with you. And on this November 11, we will continue in our read in Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 23 today. Chapter 23, if you would turn there, please, in your very own word, and let us see what the Lord says to Ezekiel today. The word of the Lord came again to me. Ezekiel saying, son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother, and they committed harlotry in Egypt. They committed harlotry in their youth. Well, there was a mother that wasn't bringing girls up right, was she? Their breasts were there embraced. Their virgin bosom was there pressed. 
Their names, Ahola, the elder, and Aholaba, her sister. Ahola means her own tabernacle. And Aholaba means my tabernacle is in her. They were mine, the Lord says. And they bore sons and daughters. As for their names, now here's the real meaning, Samaria is Ahola. And Jerusalem is Aholabah. Ahola played the harlot even though she was mine. And she lusted for her lovers. The neighboring Assyrians who were clothed in purple, captains and rulers, all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding on horses. And thus she committed her harlotry with them, all of them choice men of Assyria, and with all for whom she lusted. All of them. Doesn't say just one. With all her idols, she defiled herself. She has never given up her harlotry brought from Egypt. For in her youth, they had lain with her, pressed her virgin bosom, and poured out their immorality upon her. Therefore, I have delivered her into the hand of her lovers, into the hand of the Assyrians for whom she lusted. They uncovered her nakedness, took away her sons and daughters, and slew her with the sword. She became a byword among women, for they had executed judgment on her. Now, although her sister Aholaba saw this, she became more corrupt in her lust than she, and in her harlotry more corrupt than her sister's harlotry. She lusted for the neighboring Assyrians, captains and rulers clothed most gorgeously, horsemen riding on horses, all of them desirable young men. And then I saw that she was defiled. Both took the same way. But she increased her harlotry. She looked at men portrayed on the wall, images of Chaldeans portrayed in vermilion, girded with belts around their waists, flowing turbans on their heads, all of them looking like captains in the manner of the Babylonians of Chaldea, the land of their nativity. As soon as her eyes saw them, she lusted for them and sent messengers to them in Chaldea. And then the Babylonians came to her into the bed of love, and they defiled her with their immorality. So she was defiled by them and alienated herself from them. She revealed her harlotry and uncovered her nakedness. And then I alienated myself from her as I had alienated myself from her sister. And yet she multiplied her harlotry in calling to remembrance the days of her youth when she had played the harlot in the land of Egypt. For she lusted for her paramours, whose flesh is like the flesh of donkeys, and whose issue is like the issue of horses. Whoa. Okay. Thus you called to remembrance the lewdness of your youth when the Egyptians pressed your bosom because of your youthful breasts. Therefore, Aholaba, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will stir up your lovers against you from whom you have alienated yourself, and I will bring them against you from every side. The Babylonians, all the Chaldeans, Pekod, Shoah, Koah, 
all the Assyrians with him, all of them desirable young men, governors and rulers, captains and men of renown, all of them riding on horses, and they shall come against you with chariots, wagons, and war horses, with a horde of people. They shall array against you buckler, shield, and helmet all around. I will delegate judgment to them, and they shall judge you according to their judgments. I will set my jealousy against you, and they shall deal furiously with you. They shall remove your nose and your ears, and your remnant shall fall by the sword. They shall take your sons and daughters, and your remnant shall be devoured by fire. They shall also strip you of your clothes and take away your beautiful jewelry. And thus I will cease your lewdness and your harlotry brought from the land of Egypt, so that you will not lift your eyes to them, nor remember Egypt anymore. For thus says the Lord God, Surely I will deliver you into the hand of those you hate, into the hand of those from whom you alienated yourself. They will deal hatefully with you, take away all you have worked for, and leave you naked and bare. How do you think the people are taking this message to them? How are we, you and I taking this message? The nakedness of your harlotry shall be uncovered, both your lewdness and your harlotry. I will do these things to you because you have gone as a harlot after the Gentiles, because you have become defiled by their idols. You have walked in the way of your sister. Therefore, I will put her cup in your hand. Thus says the Lord God, you shall drink of your sister's cup, the deep and wide one. You shall be laughed to scorn and held in derision. It contains much. You will be filled with drunkenness and sorrow. The cup of horror and desolation the cup of your sister Samaria. You shall drink and drain it. You shall break its shards and tear at your own breasts. For I have spoken, says the Lord God. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have forgotten me and cast me behind your back, therefore you shall bear the penalty of your lewdness and your harlotry. The Lord also said to me, Son of man, will you judge Ahola and Aholaba? Then declare to them their abominations, for they have committed adultery, and blood is on their hands. They have committed adultery with their idols, and even sacrificed their sons, abortion, or after the babies were born, terrible, terrible things, sacrificed their sons, whom they bore to me, passing them through the fire to devour them. Moreover, they have done this to me, they have defiled my sanctuary on the same day and profaned my Sabbaths, Shabbats. For after they had slain their children for their idols, on the same day they came into my sanctuary. On the same day, they came into my sanctuary to profane it. And indeed thus they have done in the midst 
of my house. Furthermore, you sent for men to come from afar, to whom a messenger was sent, and there they came. And you washed yourself for them, painted your eyes, and adorned yourself with ornaments. You sat on a stately couch with a table prepared before it on which you had set my incense and my oil. The sound of a carefree multitude was with her and Sabians were brought from the wilderness with men of the common sort who put bracelets on their wrists and beautiful crowns on their heads. And then I said, concerning her who had grown old in adulteries, will they commit harlotry with her now and she with them? Yet they went into her as men go into a woman who plays the harlot. Thus they went in to Ahola and Aholaba, the lewd women. But righteous men will judge them after the manner of adulteresses and after the manner of women who shed blood, because they are adulteresses, and blood is on their hands. For thus says the Lord God, Bring up an assembly against them. Give them up to trouble and plunder. The assembly shall stone them with stones and execute them with their swords. They shall slay their sons and their daughters and burn their houses with fire. Thus I will cause lewdness to cease from the land that all women may be taught not to practice your lewdness. They shall repay you for your lewdness, and you shall pay for your idolatrous sins. And then you shall know that I am the Lord. Wow. All right. We move right along to the New Testament, please. We are in the book of Hebrews, way in the back of your Bible. Please turn to Hebrews, and I hope maybe you're keeping a marker at each place so you can just go flip. Today we are continuing in chapter 10 of Hebrews, picking up with verse 19, 19. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Not forsaking, now listen to this, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And so much the more, as you see the day, capital D on day, approaching, and so let us exhort one another. Now, if you've had something hurt you, pastor, people in the church, whatever, and you've just said, well, I'm not going anymore. I'm, I'm, why those people? 
and and you are pointing a finger and you are blaming them but you you are not paying any attention to your own sins you're wrong you 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 are working against what this word says to you lovingly says to you and i ask you i i implore you please forgive the past forgive Forgive the pastor. Forgive the parishioners. Forgive the elders. Forgive whoever. And either go back, if they're preaching the true word of God, go back. Each one of us is a, a walk. Each one of us is a progress, okay? We don't all have it all together. Or find a church that you feel that is preaching the true word of God, reading it, teaching it, believing it, and plug in. Plug in. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. This is the word of God. Not forsaking. Plug in somewhere. And go at it, not what you're going to get, but what you're going to give, bring your love, bring your hugs, your greetings of welcome, your smiles, your prayers. There are a lot of people that are hurting much more than you are, and they need you. They need your prayers. They need you. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law, Moshe's law, dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, counted a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace. For we know him who said, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord, which was first spoken in Deuteronomy 32, 35. Deuteronomy 32, 35, where God said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, it was spoken, the Lord will judge his people. And that's from Deuteronomy 32, 36. Deuteronomy 32, 36. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Oh, I have a great fear of the living God, a great love. But I also knew, know who has charge, who has charge of my life. It's either his grace and mercy and will for me to live today or... <laughs> and I come from, I come from that vision very freshly. Spent quality time viewing a beautiful moon with my husband and within the hour he fell on the bathroom floor and went with the Lord. Quick. Death can come quick. Quickly. Better English. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But recall the former days in which, 
after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings. Do you remember that? You got born again, and boy, it was like phew, everything came against you. Your family didn't want you to, they said, oh, no, not a Jesus freak. Oh, my, oh, what, what's happened? What's happened to mom, dad, brother, sister? You fought some battles. Some people didn't make it. They quit. They gave up the living God because of the persecution of people. You endured a great struggle with sufferings, partly while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations. Oh, man, all my family, all my friends, everybody in, in the little town I lived in, you heard about Jane Howard? Man, stay away from her. She's become a Jesus freak. I lost a lot of friends. But I hung on to Jesus. I never let him go. And it's 50-some years now. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, you came to save me. And my brothers and sisters here and Man, they're, they're doing thumbs up and hearts all over the place on the screen. Because I know you feel that way too. He brought us out of sin <clears throat> into the revelation of what his blood, his sacrifice on the cross paid our sin, our price, once and for all. But we had been made a spectacle both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. For you had compassion on me in my chains, Paul is saying, and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Oh, there are things waiting for us in heaven, y'all. It's worth walking this walk. Waiting for us in heaven. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise and now here is just a wonderful quote from, let me look at this tiny little writing here. Mm, well, I'm going to trust Connie to put it right down there for you. <laughs> this is so tiny, I can't read it this morning. Here's the quote. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Don't go back to the former sins. They'll bite you harder if you go back than the first time. Uh, you sort that what I just said out for your own life. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. That's my confession. I know it's your confession too. We're not going to draw back. We're not going back to the stuff we used to do, the way we used to talk, the way we used to think. No, we're going to praise God. We're going we're gonna to worship with these mouths and these tongues. Our eyes are going to be looking up because Jesus is coming. When? I don't know. He doesn't know. He said only the Father knows. But you can plan on it. He's coming. We're either going to have our feet still on earth and see him burst through the clouds with glory. The whole world will see that. Or he's coming to take you home. So let's live today like it was our last. On the other hand, let's also live today like it was our first. Let's renew how we used to. We were so excited. 
we got born again. We, we saw the plan. Our eyesight, the curtain was taken up so we could see the word of God plainly. Now we understood. Let's keep that same freshness. Let's keep it. Let's lay hold of it. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Woo! Glory! I'm excited. I'm renewing it. All right, we move right along to Psalm 109. Psalm 109, this is another psalm that David brought forth. <clears throat> he gave it to the chief musician. And oh, I'm looking forward to going to heaven. I want to hear all of these psalms in the original music. It is going to be glorious. Here are the words. Do not keep silence, O God of my praise. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful have opened against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue, David says. They have also surrounded me with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. In return for my love, they are my accusers. But I give myself to prayer. Oh, they underline that one. And let's do likewise. I give myself to prayer. Thus they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Set a wicked man over him and let an accuser stand at his right hand. When he is judged, let him be found guilty and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few and let another take his office. Yeah, that sounds good for Washington, D.C. And let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless. Oh, now we're getting very terse. And his wife a widow. David said these things, and guess what? We're reading it's the word of God. Let his children continually be vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also from their desolate places. Let the creditor seize all that he has and let strangers plunder his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy to him, nor let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Let his posterity be cut off. And in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered before the Lord, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be continually before the Lord, that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. <clears throat> because he did not remember to show mercy, but persecuted the poor and needy man, that he might even slay the broken in heart. As he loved cursing, so let it come to him. As he did not delight in blessing, so let it be far from him. As he clothed himself with cursing, as with his garment, so let it enter his body like water and like oil into his bones. Let it be to him like the garment which covers him and for a belt with which he girds himself continually. Let this be the Lord's reward to my accusers, to those who speak evil against my person. But you, O oh God the Lord, deal with me for your name's sake, because your mercy is good. Deliver me. For I am poor and needy. 
and my heart is wounded within me. I am gone like a shadow when it lengthens. I am shaken off like a locust. My knees are weak through fasting. Well, I doubt that in America. And I doubt that, Jane. And shame on us. Our, meat, our knees are not weak through fasting. And my flesh is feeble from lack of fatness. I also have become a reproach to them. When they look at me, they shake their heads. Help me. Help me, O oh Lord my God. O oh, save me according to your mercy, that they may know that this is your hand, that you, Lord, have done it. Let them curse, but you bless. When they arise, let them be ashamed, but let your servant rejoice. Let my accusers be clothed with shame, and let them cover themselves with their own disgrace as with a mantle. I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth. Yes, I will praise him among the multitude, for he shall stand at the right hand of the poor to save him from those who condemn him. Wow. Words from the depths of David's heart. We wrap up today's reading with Proverbs, and Scott has told us uh, in Hebrew it is M-I-S-H-L-E-I. -E Mishle is how you pronounce it. And he said that Proverbs, Mishle, means a family or a village of parables. How about that personalization? How about we think about the whole book of Proverbs in that way? Mishle, meaning family or village of parables. And here's today's parable. Proverbs 27, 13. Proverbs, Mishle 27, 13. Take the garment of him who is surety for a stranger and hold it in pledge when he is surety for a seductress. Just go ahead and hold that garment because it might not turn out well. And then you will have something at least in your hand for what you lost. Take the garment of him who is surety for a stranger and hold it in pledge when he is surety for a seductress. Woo! That's a tough word there. Let's wrap it up in prayer. Father God, we are so grateful for your word. Oh my. Your word blesses and it corrects. It can do it all at the same time. Precious Lord, we thank you. We are, we are happy to be in your word. We hold it dear within us. For these are tough days. <clears throat> and we need the power and also the mercy of your word for ourselves and for how we treat others and to share with others that we can share that God will forgive, that he is a merciful God, that Holy Spirit will come and guide you and, and instruct you and, and comfort you. Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh is a comforter for your times that your heart is broken. Let him come and you spend time with him and he will comfort you. Spend time in the word. 
write down some scriptures that apply to your life and put them up somewhere where you see them until you have memorized them, until they just automatically come to your mind. Father God, we continue higher to greater things and we hold up Jerusalem. We hold up a holaba. We hold her up to you. Father God, we hold up Israel. We hold up your Jewish people. Oh, they are in the fight of their life. But the army is being led by you. By you. We can read of their troubles and the plan you have for them. And the wonderful bottom line is they win in the end. They win and the enemies lose. Even when it looks like the enemy is winning, no, that's temporary. Your people, you gave them the land. You brought them out of Egypt. We've had it referred to us again this morning. You took them on that long journey across the hot, barren wilderness. And you will fulfill your promise to them. The time it takes, we don't know. But Lord, we are asking for today. We are asking, precious Lord, that you be Lord of the armies. That you, you are Lord over the IDF. And Father God, we're asking that you have your right hand over the IDF as they pursue on. Father God, they are surrounded by huge, huge countries of land and all the people have been brought up in those places to hate them, been brought up from tiny children. Father God, we cry out to you. We cry out to you on behalf of them. We cry out to you, Lord, on behalf of your mighty, mighty right hand. And Lord, we ask for a blessing on your people. We ask, Lord, for comfort for those who have already lost soldiers. They have lost children, mothers. They have precious ones who are being held as hostages. And I'm sure they are just sleepless with worry over their precious, precious children, their wives, their husbands, those that they don't know where they are. They don't know what's happened. Father God, may we be so bold as to ask that you arrange a redemption, a release for those held captive. Lord, there are Americans that their families over here don't know where they are or what, if anything, has happened. Precious God, we'd ask that you would bring Holy Ghost to them, that they would just not go crazy, insane, with worry, <clears throat> with imaginations on horrible things. Precious God, please hear our pleas, hear our prayers. We have prayers, Lord, for our friends, for our other relatives, for their situations in life. Help us, Lord, to be encouragers. Help us, Lord, to be the ones that, that walk with them through a tough situation. They go through the valley of the shadow of death with them. They need friends. They need people who love them. And so, Father, I'd ask that you'd be with every single veteran today. Many veterans with horrible, terrible memories, scenes of their own soldiers and brothers who didn't come home from all the wars you could name. Some of them have never spoken 
of the things that are locked up in their heart, but they've suffered. They've suffered. Lord, we're asking, please, please heal these veterans today. Let this be the day that they feel forgiveness, that they feel healed, that they give that burden over to you. It's too heavy. Help them, Lord. And we're going to continue with all the other prayers in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. God bless each and every one of you. I love you all so much. Bye-bye.